You're watching Miami Temple Kids. Woke up this morning feeling kind of blue. A little sad, but I know just what to do. Oh, oh, oh. Good morning guys and happy Sabbath. Today is October 17th and we're so excited for another Sabbath School lesson review. Remember, primary, juniors, and early teen classes, you have got Zoom at 1 p.m. with our Miami Temple teachers. Also, if you're interested, you can visit our website, miamitemple.org. There's a link there for children's ministry and you're able to find the lessons for our kids on our website, all right? If you're interested in joining one of our Zoom classes, please email me at children at miamitemple.org. I'll send you a small little form for you to fill out and then we'll send you the links to our Zoom classes, all right? For right now, let's listen to our Sabbath School teachers. I'll see you guys in a little bit, okay? Bye. Hola, soy Miranda. Oro para que goce de buena salud. de dos. Good morning, guys, and happy Sabbath. This is our beginner's class, and we've been studying the same lesson all month. Do you guys remember your memory verse? I pray that your health is good. That's right. Stand up. We're going to do it together one more time. I pray that your health is good. Good job, guys. And that's found in 3 John 2. Now this month we've been reading about Jairus and his daughter who was very sick and Jesus was going to visit his town. When Jairus came up to him, he said, Jesus, please help my daughter, please. So now we're going to watch a video and find out what happened to Jairus' daughter. I'll see you guys at the end of the video, okay? Bye. Jairus was an important man. He had an important job at the local synagogue. But that didn't matter and it really didn't help. His daughter was sick and nothing anyone could do was making her well. But Jarius knew there was one person who could help. He had heard about the miracles Jesus could do. He had heard that Jesus could make people well. So Jarius went to find Jesus. Jarius found Jesus with a crowd of people at Levi Matthew's house. He pushed his way to where Jesus was and fell down at Jesus' feet. My little daughter is dying, Jarius cried. 
Please, Jesus, come put your hands on her so she will be healed and live. But before they got there, a man came running towards them through the crowd. Don't bother Jesus anymore, the man said to Jairus. I'm so sorry, but your daughter died a few minutes ago. But Jesus didn't pay any attention. Don't be afraid, he said to Jairus. I can make her better. When they reached the house, people were crying and they were wailing loudly. Well, Jesus sent them all outside. Only Jairus and his wife and three of Jesus' helpers were allowed to go into the house with Jesus. The little girl was lying on her bed. Her eyes were closed and she was very, very still. Jesus took her by the hand and said, Little girl, listen to me. Get up. And all of a sudden, the little girl started to breathe. Her eyes opened, and she sat up and smiled. Jesus smiled, too. Then he turned to the little girl's mother and said, Please give her something to eat. Jarius and his wife were so happy. Jesus had listened to Jarius's cry for help. He had come, even though everyone said it was too late. And now their little girl was alive again, and they were so glad that they had asked Jesus for help, and they were so happy that he had listened. They were thrilled to have their little girl alive and well again. Jesus loved that little girl, and he loved her mommy and daddy too. He was happy to listen to them. And you know what, boys and girls? Jesus loves you too. He always listens to you when you talk to him in prayer. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Did you see how he raised Jairus' daughter up from the dead? She was just sleeping and everybody was so happy. Our memory verse says, I pray that your health is good. Good job. Now it's time for our Sabbath school poem. So stand up, stand up, ready? From the top of my head to the tips of my toes, I will be Jesus' child wherever I go. We'll see you guys next week. Happy Sabbath. Bye. One thing I know, I am blind and now I see. So nine swim the pipe. Happy Sabbath, kindergartners. We're now, remember in our new one, this is lesson four. Even though we're in the third week of our new quarter, we're doing lesson four. Now I see. Thank you so much. Who was that who said it again? Nathan. Yeah, Nathan, thank you for helping us with the memory verse. Now, I enjoy the Gracelink video, and then I'll come back after to see if you were paying really good attention. Okay. Hello, boys and girls. This is Aunt Fernita, and I have a wonderful story for you called Now I Can See. Today's memory verse is from John chapter 9, verse 25. It says, One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. The message for today's story is we serve God when we tell others what He has done for us. When something wonderful happens to you, whom do you tell about it? Well, a long time ago, something wonderful happened to a blind man. Whom do you think he told? One day, Jesus saw a young man who had been born blind. The young man sat by the road begging people to give him just a little money. But Jesus didn't give him any money. He gave him something much, much better. Jesus spit on the ground, made a little mud with the spit, and put the mud on the man's eyes. Go wash in the pool of Siloam, Jesus told the man. So the blind man went to the pool and washed. And an amazing thing happened. As soon as the mud was rinsed from his eyes, he could see. Imagine how happy he was. And imagine how surprised his family was when he came home. He was like a different person. In fact, the neighbors weren't even sure it was the same man. Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg, they asked? Yes, that's him, some said. No, no, he only looks like him, others said. This young man couldn't wait to tell them what Jesus had done for him. Yes, I was blind, he said. I was born blind and I could never see until today. The man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. 
He told me to go to Salome and wash. So I went to the pool and washed the mud off, and then I could see. Some neighbors took the man who had been born blind to the Jewish rulers, but the Jewish rulers didn't want to believe that Jesus had made him see, and they didn't want anyone else saying that Jesus had made him see either. So they sent for his parents. Is this your son? they asked. Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it that now he can see? This man's parents were afraid of the Jewish rulers, and they didn't want to answer. He is our son, they said, and we know he was born blind, but how he can see now or who opened his eyes, we really don't know. Ask him. He will speak for himself. But this young man was not afraid of the Jewish rulers. He was so thankful that Jesus had done something good for him, and he wouldn't keep quiet. He told the rulers about the mud and how he had washed it off in the pool of Siloam. And guess what? They chased him out of the synagogue. When Jesus heard about that, he went to find the man. For the first time, the man saw the one who had healed him. He saw Jesus smile, and he smiled back. Then the man knelt before Jesus and thanked him for healing him. He would never, ever forget this day, and he would never stop telling people about the wonderful thing Jesus had done for him. Now, I hope you watched and paid close attention because these pictures will help you remember what happened in the video. Now, in this one, remember, Jesus and his disciples had passed by a blind man. And this man had never been able to see. He'd never seen a flower, a tree, a house, or even his mother's face because he was born blind. Right. Now, what does this picture remind you of? Okay. Now, the disciples thought that he was blind because he had done something wrong. But they were wrong. The man was sad because he couldn't see. Hmm. What about this picture? Jesus loved the blind man, yeah? He made some clay and he put on the blind man's eyes and told him to go and wash in a pool of what? Siloam. Yeah, you didn't remember that name, right? And he would be able to see. Then, look at this one. This one, the blind man obeyed Jesus. He did just what Jesus said. He knelt down and he washed his eyes in the pool of Siloam. And for the first time in his life, he could see. And he was really, really happy. What happened here? Ah, uh, yeah, there were some people in the temple that were not happy at all that the blind man could see. They thought that Jesus had done something wrong because what day was it that he healed him on? Yeah, he healed him on the Sabbath. And they didn't like that. But it's good to do good things on the Sabbath. Hmm. Last picture. Uh huh. When he found Jesus again, Jesus told him that he was a son of God. And the man said, I believe. And he knelt down and worshiped Jesus. Now that was great. Now, do you remember what your memory verse said? What Nathan said? It said, one thing I know, I was blind, but now I see. Say that again. One thing I know, put your hand up on your head. One thing I know, I was blind, but now I see. And in your pretend Bibles, that's found in John 9, verse 25. So practice that. One thing I know, I was blind, but now I see. Until next time, kindergartners, happy Sabbath. Bye. Hi, my name is Sophie, and today's memory verse is, whatever you do, work it with all your heart. Colossians 3.23. Bye. <laughs> Good morning, Primary Sabbath School class. Happy Sabbath to all of you. Thank you, Sophie, for reminding us of our memory verse for this week. Can you believe we're in the middle of October already? Some of you may think that this year has gone so slow. And some of you may have thought this year has gone so fast. We're in the middle of October and the year is almost over. That's amazing. We're going to continue this week with our story about Jacob. Remember, we've been learning all about Jacob for the past several months. We've learned how he and his twin brother Esau, they would fight all the time. 
And Jacob tricked Esau, and Jacob tricked his father, and he had to leave. And then he met someone that he fell in love with. But you know what? Jacob, the guy who was tricking everybody else, he got tricked too. We learned about that a little bit last week. Eventually, Jacob decides, and Jacob hears from God, that it would be a good idea for him to leave his uncle Laban's house and to go back to where his parents and his brother had lived. So in this week's story, we're going to learn all about that. How Jacob left suddenly and Laban came after and chased him down. Enjoy the story. Have you ever eaten in a restaurant with your family? If the service was good, did your family leave a reward or a tip for the person who waited on you? Did that person expect a reward or a tip? When you help someone, do you think about getting a reward? Twenty years had gone by since Jacob had left his home and family. Twenty years he had worked for his uncle Laban. By this time, Jacob had ten sons and at least one daughter. After Joseph had been born, Jacob had asked Laban to let him return to Canaan. But Laban had begged him to stay. Please stay, Laban had pleaded. I know that the Lord has blessed me because of you. So Jacob had agreed to stay, and Laban had agreed to pay Jacob for his work. All the spotted, speckled, and dark-colored sheep or goats would belong to Jacob. Since that time, many animals had been added to Jacob's flock. Jacob was now a wealthy man. Laban's sons were not happy about this. Jacob knew that they believed his flocks should belong to them. And Jacob also knew that Laban's attitude towards him was not what it had been. So when the Lord told Jacob, Go back to the land of your fathers, Jacob knew it was time to leave. Without a word to Laban, he gathered his wives, his children, and his flocks and started for Canaan. After three days, Laban learned that Jacob was gone. Laban started after him. Seven days later, Laban caught up with Jacob. That night, God spoke to Laban. The next day, Jacob watched Laban and his men. He wrinkled his forehead with concern as they drew nearer. He knew that Laban would not be happy with him. Why did you run away without telling me? shouted Laban. You didn't even let me kiss my grandchildren and my daughters goodbye. You know it is in my power to harm you. But last night God told me not to say anything to you, good or bad. Jacob answered, I left without telling you because I thought you might try to take my wives and children away. Uncle Laban, Jacob continued, I have been a faithful worker for you for twenty years. During that time, I was careful to take good care of your animals. I didn't complain about my work, whether it was blistering hot or freezing cold. I worked fourteen years to pay my debt to you for your daughters. And these past six years, I have worked to earn my animals. During that time, you changed my pay ten times. But God was with me. You would have sent me away empty-handed. But God knows how hard I've worked for you. And that is why he talked to you last night. Jacob, in a way, everything you have is from me, Laban spoke sharply. These are my daughters and my grandchildren. The animals you have came from my flocks, but it wouldn't be right for me to keep my daughters and their children. Laban's voice was kinder now. Let's make a peaceful agreement, he offered. Jacob agreed. 
So both families gathered some stones into a big heap. These stones are a witness between us," said Laban. "I will not go past this pile of stones to harm you, and you will not pass it to harm me." Jacob repeated the promise. I will not harm you, and you will not harm me. Then the two men and their families shared a meal together. Early the next morning, Laban kissed his daughters and grandchildren. Then Laban returned home, and Jacob and his family traveled on to Mount Canaan. For many years, people called that place Mispa, a place of blessing. For it was there that Laban said to Jacob, "May the Lord keep watch between you and me when we are away from each other." Good morning. The power text for this Sabbath is found in Matthew six fourteen, and it says, "For if you forgive others when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you." Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, juniors. We're on lesson three, and the title for this week's lesson is "Found Out and Forgiven." Now, the lesson for this week. Remember, we talked about sin last week, and David and Bathsheba and Uriah, and how destructive sin really is. But this week, we bring another character into the story, and his name is Nathan. Nathan was a prophet, and he was given a very hard task. He had to not only confront the king of Israel, but he had to tell him that he did wrong. You know, it's not easy, guys. It's not easy when you tell someone that they've done something wrong, but to tell a king that he's done wrong—that's a really hard task. But God gave Nathan wisdom, and Nathan used a story to illustrate how David had gone wrong with Uriah and with Bathsheba. And at the end of the story, David was so angry. He said, "Tell me who that man is, and I'm going to punish him." And when Nathan turns around and says, "But King, you are the man of this story," David had a change of heart. And you know what? That is what we call repentance. When we turn around and we stop doing what is wrong, and we do what is right. It's kind of like this top here. I don't know if you've ever seen this top. It's a special top. It's called a turnaround top. Now, I'm not very good at this, so I might need to do this a couple of times so you can see what the top does. Now, watch. When we're in sin, watch what happens. We're in that sin. Oop! It didn't work, but I'll do it again. When we're doing sinful things, we're moving one way. But when we repent, we turn around and come about it another way. We turn around completely. Now watch the top. It's going to start with this piece on the top and this big round piece on the bottom. And as I twist it, it's going to balance on the metal piece. I'm going to do it two more times to see if you see it. See how it's balancing? I turned around, and that's what repentance is, guys. Repentance is turning away from the sin and moving in the opposite direction to do what is right. Have a happy Sabbath, and I will see you in our Zoom class. One day, Nathan came to David. Nathan was a prophet who heard from God. He told David a story. Once there were two men. One of them was rich, with lots of sheep and cattle. The other man was very poor. All he had was one little lamb. He loved the little lamb so much he made it his pet. It ate and even slept in the house like part of the family. One day, the rich man had a visitor who was very hungry, and even though the rich man had hundreds of sheep of his own, he decided to go and steal the little pet lamb from his neighbor's house to cook for the visitor's dinner. What that rich man did was so wrong. He should be punished. The rich man is you. God knows what you have done. You had everything, all of the riches of the kingdom, and Uriah was poor and only had his wife, who he loved very much. Still, you took his wife away, and you had him killed. God is going to punish you for this terrible, terrible thing. Bad things will happen in your family now. 
David suddenly realized how terrible he had been. He felt awful and was very sorry for all he had done. So he cried out to God from his heart, Lord, I'm so sorry. I know I have done things that are terrible in your sight. Will you forgive me? The Lord knew what was in David's heart. He did not just say he was sorry. He really was sorry. The Lord forgave David of his sin. Happy Sabbath. This week's memory verse is taken from John 13, 35. It says, By this, everyone will know that you were my disciples, if you love one another. Hello, my early teens. How are you? Well, I hope. Well, today is October 17, which is a very special day personally for me because today is my little big brother's birthday. And I know that today he's going to be watching with his sons. So happy birthday, Eli. Now, before we go into the lesson, I first want to thank Christian who just recited this week's memory verse. So thank you, Christian. Now, I love the verse, the memory verse, because it kind of encapsulates what this week's lesson was all about. And this week's lesson is entitled, Christian Service Living with Purpose. Now, you know, the word servant, for some reason, has a lot of negative connotation for a lot of us, because we think that servants are people who are subject to others and don't really have control over their lives. Well, maybe they do because they choose to serve, but most of us wouldn't choose the word servant to describe ourselves. But guess what? As Christians, God expects us to show his love to others by serving them, right? Have you ever been in an emergency or you were around when there was an emergency? As human beings, God has put in our heart that willingness to help others, that instinct to jump to someone's aid. But we're also kind of selfish, right? And a lot of times we put ourselves and our needs first. You think about Jesus when he came down to earth, all he did was glorify God and what? Help others, serve others. There was really nothing that Jesus did that was for himself. Everything that he talks about, everything that he did, everything that he taught was about love and about serving others. And as Christians and people who follow Jesus, who love him and want to emulate him, then we should serve others. Now, maybe you're thinking, well, I don't know, I'm too young. I don't know what to do. I'm busy. I don't have the funds. Well, guess what? Serving others doesn't mean that you have to hop on a plane and go to the other side of the continent. You can start serving right in your environment. Start serving the people who are, are around you. And it could be something as simple as a phone call, helping someone study, you know, things that are right within the, your possibilities. So I want to encourage you this week to think of people who are around you and what are some of the needs that they have that you yourself can meet. And you know what? The beauty of serving people is that sometimes we could use the very skills and the talents that God has given us to do that. So you would not only be helping someone, but you're also using your skills to glorify God. Now, I'm gonna do a little bit of an experiment that should be an object lesson. Hopefully this will work. Well, I have here, this is actually, uh, this is for puppets, right? So we usually attach this to the arm of a puppet. I forgot what it's called, I'm sorry. And that's what you use to manipulate the puppet's arms, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to balance the stick on my fingers. And let's see how long I can keep it going, all right? But I'm gonna look at my hand, right? To try to control it and to keep it um, standing, all right? So one, two, three, up! Oh! just three seconds. Now I'm going to try again, but this time, instead of focusing on my hand, I'm going to focus on the tip of the stick. And let's see if I can hold it for longer than three seconds. Oh, please work. Oh, <clears throat> let's try again. 
Alright. <laughs> Bear with me, kids. This is supposed to work. <laughs> How long was that? It was like two seconds. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. Five seconds. Ah, that was much longer. All right, you may say that I cheated, but the point of this exercise is that when we don't focus on ourselves and we focus on others, we are able to achieve more. In other words, if you're thinking about others or constantly aware of the people in your environment, you will see the needs that they have and how you can fulfill that need. So I hope you do that this week and for the rest of your life, right? Okay, now we'll meet this afternoon at 1 p.m. in our Zoom class to talk a little bit more about the subject. But in the meantime, here's a short video that you will enjoy. See you soon. Wait, oh, they smell like America. Today's episode is about giving back and about how good can spread. I'm gonna need a bigger bag. Got too much good to give. You're not one of those people who say the world can't be changed. You, you believe that it's everybody's duty to give the world a reason to dance, right? We have a whole world to make more awesome, people. We need you, we really need you. Kids, people used to be kids, everybody. But how, Key President? Everything's terrible. Hey, quiet you. I know, sometimes things can look pretty dark, but there's always light. Light is always still there. In fact, let me show you how good spreads. Yeah, this is my baby right here. Okay, I, I need you guys to listen up. This is how good spreads. Let's read. How does good spread? Can we make the world brighter? Can we together make somebody's load lighter? Some people think good only spreads if you have lots of money. Or a nonprofit who makes a cool video that's slick and really funny. Burp. Does good only spread when you have the right hashtag, or the right bracelet, or t-shirt, or give out free tote bags? Does good happen by accident, just out of the blue? Does good only spread when Beyonce allows it to? Queen Bee? She's pretty powerful, but wow, 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 so are you. The world's only seen a glimpse of what you can do. Your heart is so big, but you might feel so small. I'm telling you now, you're thinking as a flaw. <laughs> good spreads when good is spread. And that's totally how you live. You share and you love, and you give and give and give. If someone needs lifting, you send them a rope. Your little whispers of love sends out huge gusts of hope. I know what you're thinking. That's a nice little story you're reading, Kid President. But what about me? You wanna know how you can make good things spread in the world? Show up. Show up in the world, you'll be a light. You'll see work to be done on your left and your right. Like Caitlin, a girl who met people in need and started putting inspiring words on dusty old keys. Now she gives people jobs and second chances. She's filling the world with more and more dances. Or Ricky, a funny guy who wanted to share random acts of kindness everywhere. Communities are changing in Cleveland and tons of other places because Ricky just wanted to put smiles on folks' faces. I mean, there's other things too. Ever heard of Socktober? Well, Brad, the guy behind the camera here. But before we started all this cute president stuff, he started Socktober. He was just a guy who wanted to make a difference. He was just a sad, pale man. Hey, come on. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just the truth. Well, anyway, he heard socks were one of the most needed, but least donated item in homeless shelters. Right when they're preparing in the winter months. There are over 600,000 men and women who are homeless in the United States. And some of them were children. He started telling some friends, and then they started telling some friends, and telling schools, and telling churches, and then the next year, grew even bigger. We started this little Keep President project, and I invited some people to help out. October. And you totally have. So October drives have happened all over the United States, in every single state, and on every single continent. That's the whole world, y'all. There's just a need. There's good to be done, and we're inviting people to do it. I guess that's just how good spreads. So how will you show up? How will you make things brighter? By loving the people next to you. And making your loads lighter. Anger is contagious. Hate and fear, they are too. But I'm not here to spread those. <laughs> and neither are you. We're here to spread hope and make the world dance. Open your eyes and your heart and we might stand a chance. Get out of your comfort zone and get out of your head. Get to loving people 
and good can't help but be spread. And that was our Sabbath School lesson review for this week. Now parents, just as always, between now and the 11 a.m. service, review the lesson with your children. Take some time to do the activities and crafts that they have in the teacher's edition for the classes, all right? We'll see you guys next week. Happy Sabbath. Bye.